The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game has been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, to my left, we have a man that really needs an introduction, for he is known the world over. It's the one, it's the only, it's Pops. Yeah, welcome to True School Sports. Uh, we're going to talk some more boxing. Uh, let's get to it. All right, so an interesting story, all right, a very interesting story happening in boxing. You know, we have, we, we have a lot of fighters in boxing that, that you know, when they, when they hang those gloves up, when they, when, they, when they walk away from the sport, sometimes fighters struggle to find their way in life after boxing. But one guy who's not struggling, struggling to find his way in life after boxing is uh, the gladiator, John Molina Jr. It was reported by Ring Magazine that John Molina Jr., not only has he found a life after boxing, but he found probably something just as dangerous, if not more dangerous than boxing, especially right now. He has decided to be a Los Angeles police officer. So he's, he's, he's LAPD on the asses now. Right. So listen, for all you Los Angeles residents, if you are out there and you're misbehaving and you give John Molina a lip, he's going to hit you with one of the right hands that he provided cop with. <laughs> Straight up. I mean, I think it's good sometimes. Uh, uh, you have to have a plan B, and that was his plan B, uh, to give back to the community, to serve the community. And uh, it's good. It's good for him, for himself. Um, Again, like you said, it's, a day, it's more dangerous than the ring. And though you can get knocked out, you know what's going to happen to you. But then I, the way things are these days, being a police officer, I don't, I'm, I'm not... Especially I, in LA. Yeah, I mean, oh. it's crazy. But God I, bless him. Yeah, I send my blessings to him. And uh, sometimes a career change is good for you. Um, you know, one thing for sure, you're not going to have no boring uh, no boring moments, that's for sure. The same when you go in the ring and you meet some opponent, you don't know what you're going to expect from the opponent. The same thing with being a police officer, you don't know what to expect. You don't know how to deal with it. He stated that, uh, he's, you know, I, I like this quote. He said, I quote, I couldn't do a regular job. I did 20 years of boxing and I wanted to venture out into a new world and see what's out there for me. Wow. He said that. And uh, he also, you know, apparently he was also inspired by the mid, the, the, the 1980s TV show Chips, which I don't know about. But Eric Estrada. And, he yeah, knows about and it. That's the other guy's name is Blanc Guy. Eric Estrada, yeah. Yeah, so that's what it is. But um, he he had been apparently he had been this had been something that's been going on for a year in the making. His last fight was um, on the Earl Spence Jr. Uh, John Porter undercard where we we got stopped by Jose Cito Lopez. Uh, but here's what he said in regards to his political career. It's a bit long and drawn out, so please stay with me, guys. Bear with me, and we'll dissect from here. Mm -hmm. He said, "I quote: I am the kind of guy who likes to make sure that I'm set up. Uh, I want to map out my direction for life after boxing. I didn't." want to walk away like numerous fighters that went to the level I went to not knowing what to do with themselves. I didn't want that to happen. It was a year process to get hired. They do a background investigation. They do psychological evaluation, a polygraph, all that. To do this process from the academy to their background check, it was by far the most difficult thing I've ever done. I've had to go back to school, so to speak and utilize my education, which was challenging for me, given the wear and tear I took during my boxing career. Um, and then went by saying, I'm going to do a job, I want to have a job that would excite me. The same intensity and adrenaline rush I got in the boxing ring, I get being a deputy. A lot of my boxing training comes into play. It's definitely um, an exciting career. So, yeah, that's what it is, man. John Molina, I mean, he, he, had, he had a lot to say. I, I, I mean, I can read the whole article, but I'm going to be here for like 30 minutes yeah, after that. Book, it's yeah. a whole book. So yeah, if, you want, if you want to see the article on Ring Magazine and, and read more about John Molina's story being a... LAPD deputy, you can go down in the link down below and it'll be there for you. But um, I think it's great to see, man. I think it's great to see a, a, a fighter who uh, has taken this approach. You know, it's funny because a lot of times, like especially with like boxing trainers, they they they're, they're, they're like cops first, and then yeah. they become trainers. So like an example of that would be like Sugar Hill Stewart. Like he was a cop, and then he's a trainer. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Cunningham was a cop. Yeah. Now he's a trainer. John Wayne is kind of doing the opposite. Like, like he went in there, he took his lumps as a boxer, and now, you know, and now he's now he's doing the cop thing. So I actually admire him because he, I would actually say that this way is kind of even the harder route. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> like I say, uh, the, the, the most important thing that um, he had a plan B, or that was his dream that he wanted to be, and uh, he fulfilled what he wanted to do. And, and like I said, there's no dull moment being a police officer. You don't know what situation you're gonna face, what you're gonna do, but. Just getting the adrenaline, the guys like to live for that excitement and, and the fact that they don't know what uh, what to expect and what to do, but how to resolve any kind of issues, that's the man right there. And you know, we, we know his boxing career didn't like any sort of excitement. I mean, this guy fought some big names from the Adrian Broners, Terrence Crawford, uh, Antonio DeMarco, Humberto Soto, Lucas Matisse, which was fight of the year mm -hmm. uh, in 2014. Ivan Redcag, and my personal favorite fight against Hank Lundy on ESPN Friday Night Fights one. 
he yeah. landed he was boxing out boxing his ass and he just caught him in the later rounds of the fight you know John Molina was a fighter that um, he brought excitement to the ring and now he's bringing it to the streets of Los Angeles as a deputy so free sucker yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no God bless and uh, I'm happy for him made a career change change is good sometime and uh, God bless him I'm happy for him that's it so that, that's the news John Molina Jr. the gladiator now he's no longer the gladiator now he's the deputy Wow. So he went from the gladiator to the deputy. So John Molina has joined the Los Angeles Police Department at the age of 37 following what was a, a very interesting uh, career in the sport of boxing. I wish John Molina nothing but first and foremost safety and, and, and success um, on the mean streets of L.A. as a, as a, as a police officer. And, and may he be a, a, a good cop because I know like right now with everything going on in the world, the cops are getting a bad name. But I've dealt with a lot of cops. I know a lot of cops myself. Um, they're not the majority of them are actually pretty great people so that being said you guys leave your comments down below make sure you take the time to subscribe like i say in every single one of these videos you can love me or you can hate me but i'm just a gift from Daniels. until next time take care guys